Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, why don't you hit the little subscribe button for us? It really does help us out. Do you have a Sega Nomad that has a damaged screen or you just don't like the way that those mid 90s screens look with poor resolution, ghosting and bad viewing angles? Well, in today's video, we're gonna to look to see what it takes to replace the OE screen with a modern thin film transistor type. So if you stick around, we'll show you how to get it done. All right, on the bench today, we have a Sega Nomad. Um, these are an interesting system and uh, as a handheld fan, I do have one of these and I, and I play it quite often. Um, what Sega did with this is they more or less made a portable Sega Genesis. And it was, you know, an attempt to keep that hardware alive. And that's a whole nother video of its own, uh, you know, how Sega just kept adding into the Genesis. Um, but the nice thing about this is it was completely handheld and portable. There was a battery pack that snaps on the back. Um, and it has video out. And uh, also, second controller port for two-player games. Um, like I said, it was an interesting system. But like a lot of the systems of the uh, 90s, the screens were uh, not so good. So uh, this one came to me today and the owner asked if I could put in an aftermarket LCD. And that's what we're gonna do. Now I know on some of my other videos we have done IPS screens and you know a few others. The nice thing about the Nomad, since it already has a video out, we can use inexpensive uh, TFT style um, boards. Uh, this particular one is only about $12 or $13 from Console 5, and uh, it's designed to run off 12 volts, and we'll have to do a mod to um, make it run off the battery pack or the 5 volts internal. And, of course, we need a 3D printed bracket, and that will be another uh, video coming up. Um, the importance of you having 3D printers with retro games, um, I would say at least two or three times a week, I need to print something to help save old systems. But for now, the owner said, and like I had mentioned, he uses regular Genesis games. All right, before we get too deep, we should check to see what we have. All right, we can see some of the dead pixels there. You can definitely see it inside the Sonic logo. But <laughs> this screen this screen looks incredibly nice. This is not a factory screen. Um, I was unaware that this had already been modified. So, um, you know, the standard screen would have looked washed out and as it was running, it would have been ghosting. So, uh, I guess we have to just get into this and uh, see what we actually have. So let's put the screen aside for now and open this up. And just like with the Game Gear, we should have one security screw. And we do.
The two halves separate pretty easy. Just have this one ribbon cable with the bail. Slide the bail out and the cable should just wiggle free. We can set that aside. And from here, I can actually see that we've already been modified. Uh, so it'll be a bit of a walkthrough more than an actual mod video. So we need to get the board out. There's a handful of small Phillips screws in here. We really don't need to take that out. We can just disconnect the plug like that. But honestly, if we remove the button, it'll just be out of our way. Got one more here. disconnect the speaker okay I'm gonna set that aside this pretty much looks like the mod that we're gonna install with the same screen already is in it But it looks like the 3D printed bracket is bulged. It's not set real nice into it. Okay. Well, this will actually make our life a lot easier. So, what you can see here is the same, this is similar to the board we're already running. There's a power, the red wire, you have two grounds, and they're common, but one should be power, one should be video, and then we have a yellow wire, which is our video signal. And we're already hooked up here, and give me a moment, and I'm gonna get the microscope so we can get a better look at these solder connections. All right, we got the microscope out, and so we can see here, The solder joint isn't awful. We can give it a little tug. It's connected. So, um, on the board, just for reference, here's our video out port. And we're grabbing this test point 237 right here. Okay? And that's right up at the edge of the board. And then you can get power anywhere you want. In this case, it looks like the person that had done previous work is picking up test point 202 as a ground. And then that's not test point 205, actually. 205 is this guy here. They're just coming straight off the switch, which is actually good because then we're getting full battery voltage up to our, our monitor. Um, some of the other mods um, actually have you go off of test point 209, I believe, and that comes in after the voltage regulator. Um, either way is fine, uh, but honestly, since there's already regulators built into the board, there's no reason to put the extra load on the internal voltage regulator. My preferred method would be to just grab a ground and grab power straight from uh, our battery or our, our input jack. Okay, so this is already done for us. Um, there's no reason to do any cleanup work. Um, there's our video again. Now, if you wanna split off the, the wires, you can tie the grounds together 
or um, if you want to do it a little differently, you can you can just pick up this. Well, actually, any of these, you can see the grounds how they uh, they tie in. So our board's basically done and ready. Uh, we'll just give her a quick inspection to make sure there's no other issues. And for whatever reason, nomads don't seem to have capacitor problems. Um, there's no sign of leakage um, here, just to show. Usually when these surface mount caps leak, the solder joints will look dull. And that's because acid more or less is coming out of them and eroding them. And as you can see, these are all very shiny. So I have yet to come across a Nomad that absolutely needed its capacitors changed. Unlike its little brother, the uh, Game Gear, where every single one I've worked with had, had a, a need for it. So here's our new, mon here's, here's our new screen. And <laughs> we'll see if they did the mod on this one. And they did. You can see here that where are we at there we are you can see here that we removed this diode and we soldered a wire directly to the back side of this three volt regulator which is actually what you know, the board's running off of. Here's our new monitor. And here's the diode in question. There's a couple ways of removing it. We can use hot air or we can use um, some of our low melt solder. We'll use that method. We'll use the, the low melt solder method because it's an easy way for an end user to remove this component opposed to needing to go out and buy a hot air station. So we'll go ahead and do that and we'll remove that component. And I'll be right back. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to take this off and not use hot air but the easiest method is to use low flow or low temp solder which you know you can buy in a tube like this and um, is actually linked below I'm an Amazon affiliate so using the links below does help so what we're gonna do since there's no flux inside of the uh, low mount solder we're going to add some flux here. And you can use whatever kind of tip you want. There's quite a bit of room on this. So we're just going to go ahead and use a chisel tip because it was already on it. And the nice thing about this low melt solder or low temp solder is that it stays liquid for a very long time. <laughs> and as you can see, it uh, pulled our part off almost instantly. As soon as we put a little bit on uh, one side of the, the diode and here you can You can see even with the heat off as long as it's been, this stuff is still moving. There, it finally solidified. So after removing the heat, it took, you know, several seconds, eight to 10 seconds for it to, to go solid again. And um, it's a, also, you know, you don't use a whole lot of that, but uh, 
it's a good way to um, even remove surface mount chips if need to, um, as long as they have exposed legs. A um, little bit of flux around it, put a little bit of the slow melt solder on, and just kind of go around it. It'll liquefy and, and you can just pick the entire chip up. Um, and then you can clean it off with uh, you know, solder braid later um, if, if you need to. You just lay the, the legs down on it, heat it, a little bit of flux, always use flux, and it'll flow into the copper braid. And then you can save chips. So let's go ahead and clean some of this up. And we actually want to get this low temp solder off of here because that's where we're going to solder to. It's the most convenient point to solder to. So we remove the old flux to put on a little bit of fresh flux. Nice clean pad. We can put some regular 6040 on it. Although you do want to clean your tip to make sure all the low temp is off. There we go. There we go. Nice bright solder pad. And we are going to solder here. So what I like to do is just make sure I've got some leaded solder on. I'm not sure if this board is lead free or not, but it's always easier if we just go ahead and add some leaded solder to this joint. Like that. And then finally, we just need a small piece of wire. This thin wire strips real easy just using your fingernails. And we're going to want to tin that end if it's going to cooperate with us. Like that. And like that. Okay. That's what the modification to this board requires. So the diode, if we'd have left it in line, has about a volt and a half, a volt to a volt and a half uh, power drop. So we bypass that to get more power in um, since we're on batteries. And then just feeding the, the regulator direct helps. So now, since we have this all soldered up, we can put our screen back on. There we go. Okay, just make sure it's in square. 
and then we can set it in our bracket. And if your 3D printer is calibrated right, just see which way these pins line up. Like this. If your 3D printer is calibrated correctly, all of this should snap into place. Like that. I like that. All right, from here, we can get our screws aligned on the back side of our board. There's a couple different versions of this 3D printed bracket. If you get the one from console five, it actually will go into the face of the shell first. This particular one that I printed off screws to the board. So since we know all of our connections on the power are good, we'll just go ahead and get this plugged in. And then these screws will actually line up with the old LCD screw holes. And if the print was well, done well, it should hold everything right into place for us. Don't tighten them down the whole way at first. Just kind of run them in to get a feel for if they're, they're doing what you want them to do and to make sure you hit all the holes. But once you've got all of them lined up, you can snug them up a bit. And should have something like that. <laughs> I guess I pulled the film off just a little too soon. <laughs> Let's go ahead and make sure our screen's clean though. There we go. We can make sure the inside of our panel is clean. Needless to say, if you need a new um, lens on it, this is the time to do it. You can push it out from, from behind. So one other thing we can do before we drop this in is now make sure our buttons and our membranes are clean. This one was actually in really good shape. So it's not a big deal. Just a little IPA on a cotton swab. And there's almost nothing coming off of that. And just clean up our membranes. Okay. Tuck our board back in. Just like that.
Now these larger holes, you can see here compared to the small ones, these are gonna be our shell screws. So if, you're, if you get confused, you can always go back, just look to see where everything comes through. Um, or before you remove the small screws, which you've seen me do with uh, PlayStations before, is actually mark it. It looks like somebody else had marked our chassis screws. So we should be good here. All right, and we have these buttons to go back, and we'll clean them also. Plug our connectors back in for those buttons and for the speaker. And finally, our lower connector. Like that. Oh. <laughs> never fails. <laughs> Don't forget to put the switch back in. Um, I'll be right back. All right. Uh, it never fails. On these, on the uh, Game Gears, and a bunch of the different Game Boys, it always seems like I forget to put the switch in. Um, but, you know, hey, as long as you put it in before it gets back to the customer, we're good. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and uh, give this one a test to see if all those dead pixels are gone, which they should be. And um, now I know this wasn't a full install, but mostly the only part that's different between what I just did here and a full install if, if it was an original screen is that on the Nomad screen, the ribbon cable between the LCD and the main board, it's soldered on. You can, you're never gonna put it back in. So you could literally just pull it up from the uh, main board. You can slice it with a razor, knowing that you're not gonna ever use it again. Or if you use like a curved tip, a thin curved tip like this, um, what I've done is you can get right under the edge of the ribbon and you can start working it and peel it up. Um, I believe that's the method I used in my Game Gear video, which I'll link. And uh, you can see that method. And where the screen screws down to the main board, there's a row of um, soldered connectors that come you know, through the board. They're a little bit tall, so it's usually advised to use uh, some flush cut to trim them off. Um, hopefully in a future video, I'll be able to show the full method. But uh, for now, let's see what we got. There we go. No dead pixels, which we could you know, assume that would be gone from but look how nice that screen is. Um, if you give me a moment, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my own personal game gear and I'll show you the difference between the two screens. All right, did I just say game gear? I meant Nomad. <laughs> but as you can see here, here is the new screen. And here is 
the OE. And um, you can see how much brighter this screen is compared to the original. Um, I know that's a bad spot at the moment, but um, when this starts running, you'll see the ghosting and whatnot. So anyway, um, oh, and just for demonstration purposes, there's the original battery pack. This one snaps on the back, uses six double A's. So anyway, there you go. There's the walkthrough on a, an OE or a, a new LCD screen on a Nomad. It's not a hard project and it's one of the cheaper handhelds to go ahead and change that screen in. Um, I will link everything below. I'm not an affiliate with console five, but for things like the low temp solder and any other tools you might need, there are some Amazon links below. So if you have any questions, please make comments down below. I'll be more than happy to answer anything that comes through. Uh, if you enjoyed the videos, if you enjoyed the content that I've been making, give us a thumbs up. Consider hitting that subscribe button for us. But I appreciate you being here and I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks.